Color home movies ever assembled of Major League Baseball from the 1930s through the 60s. And now, the lost teams. During baseball's golden age, Philadelphia, Boston, and St. Louis each had a pair of big league clubs. But eventually, these towns couldn't support both, creating a trio of lost teams. To be the second team in a city was to be barely a team at all. You have to learn the art of recognizing small pleasures if you're a second team in a city that doesn't win. Such was the case of the St. Louis Browns of the American League, who for 52 years played second-class citizen to the NL Cardinals. I can remember as a 16-year-old kid selling soda at a Cardinal ball game, you could make $5 because you got a nickel for each soda you sold. In a brownie ball game, you'd be lucky to make 50 cents. There was one year that the St. Louis Browns home attendance for the full season was about 85,000. Not for a weekend, for a full season. It wasn't even the second team in St. Louis in those days. It was probably the second and a half or maybe the third team. There were so many great players that the Browns had, though, back in, like, the 1920s. They had players like George Sisler. And I remember when uh, Ichiro uh, broke his record for hits in a season, uh, Sisler's name finally came back into print, and a lot of people had no idea who he was because there's no keeper of the flame when it comes to the St. Louis Browns. Following the 1953 season, the franchise moved to Baltimore, rechristened as the Orioles. On September 27th, 1953, the Browns played their last game. I was playing in that game, and uh, they didn't have enough baseballs to finish the game. So the foul balls <laughs> would go up into the stands, and. The public address announcer had asked that the fans wouldn't please throw the ball back down on the field so we could finish the game. I have become a trivia question for having driven in the last run for the St. Louis Brown. It'll still be the record until somebody decides they want to bring a major league team back to St. Louis and call it the St. Louis Browns, but I don't think that's going to happen. Then there were the anemic Boston Braves. With the Red Sox owning the city's heart, the Braves existed as the bastard team of Beantown. They were owned by a man named Emil Fuchs, who knew nothing about baseball, but figured I'm signing the checks, I might as well be the manager as well. They had a lot of, of rough years. They were not one of the better clubs in the National League. People might remember Babe Ruth finished his playing career with the Boston Braves in 1935. They ended up leaving Boston for Milwaukee in 1953. The following year, 1954, baseball lost yet another team. For over half a century, Philadelphia was the home to both the Phillies and athletics. But the city of brotherly love showed a diminishing affection for the A's, as did everyone else for that matter. Well, I grew up outside Cleveland in a little town called Berea. And we were strictly Indians fans. And they used to give tickets. And of course, they never gave you tickets for a good team. It was usually Philadelphia. But at one time, the city's American League franchise was the premier ticket in town. The A's had been one of the giant and celebrated franchises of baseball in the 20s with the great Mickey Cochran and Jimmy Fox. Connie Mack had assembled all these stars like Al Simmons, Lefty Grove, and George Earnshaw. And by 1929, he had built a dynamo of a team. As both owner and manager for the club's first 50 seasons, Connie Mack was the Philadelphia Athletics. The image of Mack's angular frame and suit and straw hat was as much a symbol of the franchise as the elephant on its sleeves. Regrettably for Mack, the A's fortunes at the gate rarely matched their fortunes on the field. So he routinely sold off his best players dismantling a would-be dynasty in order to keep the franchise afloat. After that breakup of the team, 
The Philadelphia Athletics took the elevator to the basement and stayed there year after year after year. During the 1954 season, it suddenly became apparent that the A's were in big trouble. I went to see 45 games they played that year, and they lost 41 of them. It was a pretty bad team, and that's basically why the A's ultimately were the team that left town. The A's went to Kansas City and were sold to Arnold Johnson. Broke our hearts. The Philadelphia A's, Boston Braves, and St. Louis Browns teams of the golden age that are lost, but not forgotten.